right guys so let's finish out the look and feel of our app the home page obviously still looks pretty crappy so let's get that rolling i'll be referencing most of the time my other app just to get through this bit i don't think it's super important that yours looks exactly like this but you might uh, consider it if you want it to look a little bit more realistic here's a bit of code i did for the home page it's going to reference an image in the repo that you can download if you want it, uh, but it was, it was from Unsplash, but I'll add that to my assets directory in the images folder. So let me go to my desktop and grab that. It's just a, called a gem shot. Uh, then I need to go into my finder documents, web crunch demo, workout tracker app, assets, images, paste that in. So what we're doing here is doing a content for a hero block, which is actually in our application layout. So I'll actually do that one next, just to show more context. And the layout's gonna be very similar to what we've had before. I, I just uh, modify a few things based on the state of the app. So let me show you. Here I've added a yield statement to our application layout. Everything else here is the same except this bit. I'm checking if the person has a subdomain and then also, or statement, verifying that they you know have that presence of a subdomain. So what that means is in those helpers we created before, I'm doing these things. I'm checking like if a user signed in and they actually have a subdomain or if their request subdomain is present. So why am I doing this? Basically on the root path of the site, I don't want you to actually log in directly there. Um, you can make it to where the user does log in and they're redirected and all that, that stuff works. Uh, but in this case, I just want them to sign up only from this view. Any other time they visit the site, they need to go directly to their subdomain to do anything. So that's just kind of a constraint I imply on a user. Other than that, they need to sign up. So with that in mind, you can go into the view and check for those things. So even if they are signed up, they'll still see sign up here, but you can't sign up twice for the same thing in device. So that's kind of a gotcha. Um, that's something you could check against if you want to later on. It's just one of those things. Also in the navigation, I've added one more nav bar item that is to create a new workout once you are logged in on your subdomain. So you can actually create it there. That's checking just if the user signed in in line. That's kind of a neat little thing you can do with Rails. So by default, they have to be signed in on their subdomain to even access this link. You can also make that embedded into the controller just so they can't even access this page or something like that. That's beyond the scope of this, but that's just something you could think about. Um, aside from that, we've appended our JavaScript pack tag for that form we just worked on. And then again, you know, we've got the yield hero. So that's going to imply that the home index uses that yield. So if we've got content for, I'm checking if the user isn't signed in, we're going to just display this stuff. Else we're going to display if they are signed in, we're going to welcome them by name and just kind of have some marketing going on. They can view all their workouts. And you can even check here if they have any workouts. So you do like uh, current user dot workouts dot count is greater than zero or something like that. You'd probably extract that to a helper too as well, just to make it cleaner. And you should probably avoid as much logic ever as you can from the views and put it either in your controllers or models or even into a helper of that nature. Those things definitely don't need to be grossing up your views any more than they are currently. So at the bottom, I'm checking again, if the user's not signed in, we're basically giving them this content. And then if they have a domain, we're going to just direct them to their workouts path. Otherwise, if they don't, they're going to go to a new user registration path. That's just kind of a way to make sure the, the flow is intact, whether they're logged in and out, and then they have to have a subdomain. And then if they do have a subdomain, and are logged in, they'll see their recent workouts if they have them. So here we're in the home index controller path for the views, but we can actually access our workout partial from this view as well. So we can go into this folder 
into this workout and then just render it there. So you, you have a very dry approach to, re to rendering these things out and making one component that's basically everywhere. Um, Vue.js helps with stuff like that too. And that's not what I'm gonna focus on right now, but that's just one of those things you could even extract further to some JavaScript framework like that and just render like an actual HTML tag and pass in data or attributes to them and just render them that way. So it's kind of a neat way to basically do the same thing as what partials are doing, but JavaScript is more interactive. So that's the home page. Since we have our image now, I need to add some CSS to this, which I'm gonna just pull from the app. And I think what I've added a bit just to the application file that isn't there already. So we'll go back and add that in. Cool. So that's just going to style our select field and um, the home hero stuff. This was, I was actually attempting to make a date drop down picker of my own. I think, I don't think this even applies anymore, but I'll leave it there. This is going to get that image URL from our assets directory. And this is some rails magic here. This image URL, usually this is just URL in your CSS, but you can actually scope it to the rails asset pipeline. And it knows to look in the images directory for this specific image. You just need to pass in the actual, um, file name. So it looks like I have it wrong here. I'm going to rename it to JPEG just because it shouldn't make a big deal or a big bit of difference there. So that should render in that background. There we go. So that's what you saw when I first started this series. And at this point you could sign up with a new user or just continue on. Since I have one installed, I'm just going to go to web crunch. And if you're logged in, there's a way to check. I don't know that I coded this into the app, but there's a way to check if you're logged in and you try to visit another user's subdomain, you'll get redirected or just told that that's an error. So I think that is already the case. I'm not signed in though, so it's not a big deal. You'd have to access this directly. Um, so that's something to think about. So I'll log in. And it looks like I have an issue with this. Uh, we need to update our home controller as well. So let me do that real quick. The home controller is going to have um, our actual workouts. We can query for them, but I'm going to limit it. And I believe I did five here. Yeah. So we just query for the workouts directly. So that's what that error is about. But here we, here we go. There's our workouts. We can actually contribute and create more. We can edit one and our Vue.js is loaded and working great. Uh, let's see what else we got that's different here. I think that's about it. Yeah, so I think that's it, guys. The, the general concept of the app is pretty bland. I realize it's just a, basically a, a log for your workouts, but we did some cool things that are scoping to subdomains. We're also dealing with nested attributes, which are cool to work with. And especially with Vue.js, it makes it way more interactive than having to like, you know, do this all with vanilla JS or jQuery for one. Um, there are other gems you could source to do those things. If you don't want to deal with Vue.js, I think cocoon gem is one. It's basically a, a jQuery nested fields generator. So you just require these things in a similar fashion as we did, but there's a little more modeling you have to do as well as making sure the HTML and CSS and JavaScript is all up to spec. It seems a little more intuitive, but also a little limiting on the jQuery side. If you don't want to use jQuery, I, I try to, it's not that it's bad. I just don't, I kind of want to go the, the default JavaScript route these days. The way the language is growing and, and transitioning, you don't really need jQuery anymore in some cases. The same was true with the modern browsers and stuff that we're using. So once IE is finally gone, we'll just totally be awesome, happy people as developers. Hee <laughs> hee. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. So 
here's how you create a workout. We're scoped to our subdomain. You can log out and go back. I'm, after that logout, I could redirect every logout maybe to the, the main route. But yeah, you can do those things, create a new subdomain. If you were to extend this, maybe you'd put a payment gateway in front of that. So you'd you know want the user to pay to get to that subdomain. Possibilities are endless there. So I definitely invite you to extend this more. One thing I mentioned before is to deal with definitely a different database for this type of thing. Uh, PostgreSQL is probably the most recommended, I would say. Uh, in terms of pushing this to production, you wouldn't want to do so yet. You would definitely want to use something like Heroku or I've been using Hatchbox. It's by the creator of GoRails.com, Chris. His stuff is really cool. It's it's definitely a leaner approach to Heroku, but it's way cheaper and very scalable and makes me happy. So kudos to him. Thanks, Chris. I'll link to Hatchbox for you guys to check out if you want. And then, um, yeah, if you like this stuff, Keep supporting me if you can, like like and subscribe to the channel. I may consider doing something fully featured soon, more fully featured. It might be more of a dedicated course or something like that. Um, if you're interested in seeing something like that, let me know. I'm in concept mode right now for it, so I'm just trying to think of what I could do to help people who are interested in learning about the framework or more interested in learning about a framework in general to build their ideas out. So I'm thinking that might be something I approach next. Um, this has been, I think, what, my 12th or 13th Let's Build. So it's been a quite a journey, but I've definitely learned a lot. I think there's a lot more to learn with Rails. I actually just bought a book on testing that I'm digging into. So um, there's a whole testing side of where else we haven't even discussed yet. That's something I really want to learn and kind of get at least more familiar with for my day job at Dribble. We do a lot of testing first, so test driven development kind of thing, and it saves our asses. So it's really worth looking into if you're going to consider going the Ruby on Rails developer route. So um, with that, I'll quit yakking. Hopefully you like this and I will see you next time. Thanks.